first minute is all build up, you know, layering the pianos with the violins and just how Florence's voice comes across. It's all just hard to describe in words, but it's all just achingly beautiful right throughout. In fact, very comparable with Kate Bush's own This Woman's work in terms of just overall wonderful tone. A Hundred Years is also fantastic, adding a beautiful harp line to the layers, as she was keen to point out on our amazing performance on Later with Jules Holland this year. And then of course we have Grace, another one with a um, beautifully elegant piano, angelic choir, just again all achingly beautiful, although that one again brings in the mystical element to Florence and the Machine. Me t talking about, about mermaids, which you can of course put alongside the killer whales in Ship to Wreck. However, my big criticism and would be that, as an album, it can get a bit same. It can all start to drag out and blend into one another a bit. In fact, the, the out of all every person I've talked to who doesn't like Florence and the Machine states that their reasoning is that every single one of her tracks sounds very much the same. And I'm afraid I can't argue with that. They really do. She has a winning formula and she's sticking to it. But the problem is, when you're listening to that in an album format, it really drags. Like I said, all the same tempo, they've all got similar themes, they all sound similar with that, all have that same setup where it's quite minimal at the start and then building up all the orchestral and angelic elements. And yeah, despite all its vibrancy, it lacks variety. And I'd say that is definitely what lets this album down. In fact, when I first listened to it, uh, there was tons of times where I would, like, roll my eyes, like... Like, when I actually listened to each of the tracks, it was fantastic, but it was just that feeling of, uh, here we go again. This problem is most evident on what I cite as the worst track on the album, which I have no idea why she released this as the first single for this album, A Sky Full of Song, where... Why was this one the single? Like, this one was just too much on the minimal side. And it has the exact the exact same formula as all the other tracks, but just totally min minimal. So none of that aching beauty, none of that amazing choir. It is literally an in one ear, out the other track. It could be a filler, so why was that the single? So, if you haven't listened to this album for the, because that was your first introduction to it, then toss that aside, dive right in. And especially because you'll be rewarded, because there is some dalliance in this variety. Evidence on another one of the great tracks on this, Big God. Whereas all the other tracks are all about beauty, as in, well, harsh subject matter, but overall tone, it's all about a sense of beauty and fragility surrounding all these problems. This one is all about power and passive aggression. You have the powerful, brilliant piano starting it off, coming across almost like a rag and bone man track, you know, human, that sort of feel to it. Of course, the stomping drums then come in, and you get this edgy tone from all the electronic effects and stutters that are put in, you know, backward screeching, bits of distortion, and, th and even like the sound, like this one is benefited from, you know, completely different tone to, the, well not completely different, but a different tone to the other tracks that makes it stand out, and also a greater sense of experimentation and quirkiness, which you hope Florence follows up on if she does another transition in sound. You know, going from, you know, the mega powerful packed full of songs, orchestra, baroque, that sort of thing, to doing very mystical, to then strip, slightly stripped back, more bare in terms of emotion and lyrics, to then going a bit more experimental and quirky, you know, varying the sound. And this is evident in this track in after the second chorus when suddenly you get these echoey violins that sound almost as if they've been sampled from an old vinyl or something like that. So this is where the beauty turns to grittiness. And this is of course perfectly done. The trumpet section adding to all the layers, her voice still beautiful and at one point even blending in with the violins, highlighting how it's not just a phrase and we say her voice has become an instrument. In fact, in keeping with the track's grittiness, her voice even has a greater sound sense of anxiety in it. To, as the song fades out, it suddenly goes, uh, like the girl from The Grudge. <laughs> Um, 
manga. When the whole thing is rounded off at the end, things get very meta, with a track titled No Crier, of which there isn't in this track. It still builds up a lot, but you get the idea of bareness. And in fact, in the opening lines, sometimes it's hard to write about being happy. <laughs> but don't worry, Florence, this certainly hasn't proved a miserable ride in the slightest. Florence and the Machine have made a full transition in style, more bare and pained, yet still evidently Florence soaring and uplifting. The emotional side has been perfected. Just like the that somehow the violins and piano just ache with pure emotion. And with the new additions of synth, it just builds onto the Florence and the Machine sound, adding this amazing layers of production that just draw you in with every listen. Now, the album may outstay its welcome. It drags a bit, it arguably doesn't do a lot to the Florence and the Machine formula, and it may fade fairly quickly, considering its lack of a single which may affect its commercial success. In fact, it may even affect its staying in your head if there's a lack of a hook that you're going to be humming on the way to work. But on the whole, for any Florence fan and a, so and a music lover, this is a solid album. Surrounded by fiery red hair, I give this a 7.9 out of 10. The best tracks are definitely Hunger, South London Forever, Big God and The End of Love, with the worst undoubtedly being A Sky Full of Song. If you like this album and you want to hear more like it, a lot of people seem to compare Florence to Lana Del Rey, and there is a good sense of that in the a lot of her the foreboding eeriness around a lot of Lana's tracks, particularly I'd recommend listening to her album Born to Die if you want the one that is closest to this in terms of tone. However, if you're absolutely sick of that comparison, as I am, and you want something a bit more unheard, then I'd highly recommend listening to Bat for Lashes, another, artist, another alternative artist who's heavily Kate Bush inspired, also highly gothic, and but more, a lot more synthesizer based. Her best albums would definitely be Two Moons and, and without a doubt her criminally un underrated concept album The Bride. You need to give those a listen if you love Florence. Also Anna Calvi, another brilliant alternative female solo artist. If you want something a bit more mystical and dark then I'd recommend her second album One Breath. Even more unheard and underground artist in this subgenre of alternative female solo artists with a dark gothic tone that's highly and heavily inspired by Kate Bush but also mixes in some synth elements. I'd highly recommend listening to The Good Natured, particularly their track Your Body is a Machine, which was one of my top tracks from 2010. And I Blame Coco, the daughter of Sting, so how can you go wrong there? One final artist to compare, Gweno who has that typical Florence mysticism, or just brilliantly chilled electronica. And, and, but and it's a particularly enchanting listen in how it's all done in almost forgotten Celtic languages. So like the debut is all in Welsh and the second is absolutely in Cornish. Makes a fascinating listening and just brilliantly original in the current state of music. Au revoir, hasta la vista, sayonara. Thanks for listening to my ramblings. Goodbye.